Hello, everybody. Welcome to our October Training Tuesday for OU Campus. Today's topic is problem solving in OU Campus. We're going to go through a variety of, stick, of common sticky situations that can arise from running a website with lots of users and show you uh, how to manage or even help solve these issues in OU Campus, covering things from content, content accessibility to user access and more. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode as the session is being recorded. If you have a question during the presentation, please use the Q&A function found at the bottom of your screen. We will attempt to address your questions during the presentation. After the formal presentation has ended, we will review and answer all remaining questions. Your presenter today is Paul Warren, software trainer, making his Training Tuesday debut. Paul, it is all yours. Thank you, Erica. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and come over here and share my screen that I want. Okay, so today what we're going to be talking about, as you said, is problem solving in OU campus. And on our agenda, sometime, some of the things we'll look at are broken template images, um, hiding items from your sitemap and global search, utilizing your level 8 person users as a mini admin person, New users and their permissions and how to make sure um, that you're getting the right permissions for the right people. Changing the title of the page and changing the title on a news article listing. Reusable content access settings. <clears throat> we'll talk about nesting reusable content. Inserting instructions onto a template that you may have. Overriding pages to keep the same URL, getting to getting a link to a page that you don't have access to. So maybe you're a level eight user and you've been asked to put an image or a link on a page and you don't have access to that page. We'll show you how you can still go ahead and put that link out there. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here. So I can see here that I'm already logged in here. As Paul warned here, I am at a level 10 setting as an administrator. And the first thing I want to look at is templates and broken images. So one of the things that we recommend or has been recommended is in order to keep your space cleaned up and people ex from exploring in places that might be dangerous to them or they might be able to accidentally delete things, we have our resources file. And within our resources, we have um, our includes file, we have our templates, we have scripts, we have different things like that within here. So this is something that you may want to lock out from people. So right now, if I come in here and I do plus new, I can see that I have these little image icons here. And these are for my template, so I can, so I know, oh, hold on one second here. I got a message that you're not seeing that make sure that I am sharing here. And doo -doo -doo. let me go ahead and try this again. Ah, maybe I didn't hit share down on the bottom. Can you see my screen now? I got messages from Steve and Amy. Yes, cool. Thank you guys. It's one of those little things when you're putting it all together. I hit the right screen, but I forgot to hit the share button. So on here, if I come into my content and my resources, and I said, if I go to new here, I can see my little icons here for the different items that I have. So what I can see here is I've got my two column content right, two column left. You see the desktop? Hmm. Why are you seeing desktop? Hold on one second here. Desktop share. Hold on one second. We're doing a little troubleshooting here. Ah, I wonder if I saw the wrong one. Yeah, now I can see the little. Okay. Thank you, Erica. You're so helpful. <laughs> oh, 
I actually have two screens here. I actually have three screens here, and I think I was sharing the wrong screen. So now you should be seeing OU Campus. Are we currently seeing that? Okay. So let me stop sharing. I just did a stop share. Yeah. So, so try picking up where you have what you can. Okay, we're trying something new here. Ah, I see a success message. Okay. 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 So here, let me see here. Make sure we are sharing the right one because I do have multiple things open here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use this one here, but I'm gonna change and log out of my level eight user here that I was in as. And let me go ahead and log back in as a level 10 administrator. Okay, so if I come up to content and pages is um, you should be seeing my content here. Okay, so if I come into my resources here, I can go ahead and say that I want to lock this out so I don't want everybody to have access to it. So when I was looking at my templates here, I can see my little template images. I can cancel this out. But what I can do is I can actually come to my resources here, do edit access, and right now I can see that the access group for everyone is set. But maybe I don't want everyone to have access to my resources file. I only want my administrators to have access to that. So in this case here, everything within that resources file, I want to go ahead and lock down. So what I can do, I can come up here to apply the selected settings for the folder um, and enclosed folder. So what this is going to do, this is going to go ahead and lock down everything that we do have within this folder. And I'm going to change the access group here to everyone. And I'll go ahead and save that. So now we've gone ahead and we've changed our resources accessibility. So what I'm going to do, let me open up a new incognito window here. And I'll sign in here as a level A user. So I'll come down here. We have our last update is our direct edit link. Oh, that opened up within there. Let me go ahead and log out here. And we'll come back in here. So I'm going to log in here as a level eight user. If I come into my content and my pages, I can see that I still have access to resources for some reason, and I shouldn't because I don't want to be able to go in there. So let me go ahead and change this back real quick. Log out here. And see what's going on here. So I'll go back to my content and my pages here. I can come into my resources, edit access. 
ah, and our access group is still set to everyone. So I'm gonna change my access here, change my access group, change that to administrators only. I do wanna do it recursively, so it'll take everything that's within the system as well. I'll go ahead and hit save here. So now if I come out here and I look at my resources, we can see here that the access group is administrators only. So if I come back in here and log out as my administrator, and I log in as that level late user, and log in here, um, I've got two incognito windows open. but I'm gonna be using multiple windows. Hold on, everyone. Sorry about that, everyone. Just a little technical training here that we're getting ourselves on how we're seeing this. So now I'm in here as my level eight user. I can see that I'm looking at my underscore resources and it is in black rather than blue. So this is letting me know here that the folder is there, but I just don't have access to it. The other thing though, are those images within that template file. But within the template file, if I now go to plus new, I can see where it's broken those links there. So what I would wanna do is as the administrator, I would wanna go back in and make these links here, these images available, um, available here that we can go ahead and see those. So what I would do is I'm gonna log out here as my level eight user. I'm gonna go ahead and um, log in here as my level 10 user. And what I can do now is if I come back to my content and my pages, I can see I do have access to resources here. I can go into OU and into my templates where I have my templates stored here. And I can see within my templates, depending on how your site is set up, and that's one of the things that we'll see as we go through this, is your sites may look a little bit differently. In my, um, the templates that we have here um, for Galena University, our sandbox, we do have them already set up in different groups. So if I go to my interior pages here, I can see I have all of my interior information and I do have these GIFs within here. So if I wanted my one column GIF, I come over here, I look at it, I look at access. Currently the access group is administrators only. I can come in here and change that back to everyone and save it. So I could do that with my other GIFs that I have here. And what that will do is go ahead and bring those images back. So that way, um, everybody, when they go in and we do our two column left here and I go into access, when other users come in, the images will begin to show up again. And I'll go ahead and save that. So now, if I go ahead and log out here and go back in as that level eight user, We've done some of our images, but we haven't done all of them yet. But if I come back to my content and pages, and let's say I go into our training section here and I do plus new, we can see the certain ones that we've already gone in and changed their access to. So if you do have broken thumbnails, 
A lot of times that will be because maybe there's a restriction there. You just want to go in and look at the access on that to see where that's actually listed there to make sure that they are available to everyone. As I come back in here, I'm going to go ahead and log out of my level eight user and go back in as a level 10 user again. And <clears throat> What I want to show you next is where you have things maybe that you want to exclude from your sitemaps or the global search. When I talk about the global search, I'm meaning the search button up in the top right hand corner looks like a little magnifying glass with the world. If we come in here and we search Training Tuesday, Maybe I've got things in here that I don't want to have listed. So maybe there's a reason that I don't want this October news listed. So, or anything else listed with Training Tuesday. You can actually go in and mark things that you don't want to have listed there. If I just put in here training, we have um, additional subsections, training index page, and different things like that as well. So we do have training members and groups, but maybe I'm looking for things within these training pages that I don't want to have in there. So what I can do is I can actually go into those sections. So if I come to my content and my pages, we can come in here and see we have our training folder here. And if I come in and do edit to access it, I can see down here on the bottom, I can exclude things from the search and I can exclude things from the sitemap. So these are things that we can go ahead and select here. So if I didn't want to have certain things selected um, available there, we can go ahead and exclude them from the search and you can also exclude them from the sitemap. So then we'll go ahead and save it. So once I did go ahead and exclude things from the search, that will no longer show up if we do a search there. But the other thing is we did change something on the sitemap. So at this point here, I would actually want to go ahead and republish my sitemap to make sure that that has been pulled off. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to the top right hand corner, go to setup. I'll go to sites here. I can see my Galena site here, and I do have a publish, and I do have a publish, publish sitemap. So that will go ahead and update our sitemap for us. It lets us know it'll be overwritten if it already exists, and it will also live on our production server. So we'll go ahead and do that, and now that's been successfully updated. So now the training information has been removed from the sitemap there. The next thing I want to talk about is your level eight users. Um, they can actually be seen as mini administrators. So they can do things that other um, levels don't have the ability to do. So let me log in as a level eight here. I'll log out here. I'll go in as my level eight users. And we'll log in here. And some of the things that they can do, if we come into our content and our pages here, and we go into training, we can see here within the index page, they do have the ability to rename things, they can move things for you, they can copy, they can also move things to the recycle bin. So they have these abilities that other section, other level users may not have. So these are some things that are on here by default for your level, level eight users. One of them being moved to the recycle bin. So that is something that you can grant access to other level users, but maybe you have a person that's going to be assisting you and kind of cleaning up and doing something within the system. You can go ahead and give them a level eight ability and they can go ahead and do that. They can also work with folders. So if we come in here under file, they can rename, move, copy, and delete folders as well. So it's something that not everybody has access to. And under content and assets, they actually have the ability here to come in and look and rename and delete assets. So if there's an asset that you need to go ahead and rename, you can go ahead and do that using your level eight users. So again, it's kind of like a mini admin person that you can set up there. When it comes to creating a new person, 
you want to do that as a level 10 setting. Um, how can a level eight publish the folder? You should be able to, I don't know if they have that ability, but if I come back to content pages here, and let's say we've got our new images folder here, probably what they would best be able to do is we don't have the ability to publish directly from here, but we could go into the folder and select the things that are in here and go ahead and publish them individually, kind of as a group there. So if I come back in here and I change over to my level 10 user again, so let me log out here. If we come in here and I do want to create a new user, we do have a couple of tools. So as a level 10 user, we can go ahead and um, come in here and go into our users. In this case here, I do want to create a new user. So I do have the button here to create plus new. We'll go ahead and call this user Steve. And we'll give him a password. First name will be Steve. I'll leave it with that. We can put in an email. And then when we come down here, we have our user levels. So I do have levels zero through 10 that we can go ahead and select here, but maybe I'm not quite sure what do I, what I do want to give them? How do I want them set up? So we do have information on user levels right below that here. But we can come in here, and this takes us out to our support site. And we have our permissions chart. So this gives me a good listing of all the different permissions that are listed um, that are available. If it's got a check mark, it means that permission is given automatically. If it has a diamond, it basically means this is a permission that can be given to the person as an extra extra event there. So it's an optional thing that when you're setting the person up, you would actually go ahead and create and give them access to. And then we do have other things where it's not available at all and it's just blank. So this is a nice overall view, but it really helps out more if you're looking and saying, okay, I've got a level eight user, what do they have access to? And you can go through here. When you're creating a new user though, sometimes you need to ask questions on what do we want them to have access to? So in that case, over here on the left-hand side, we have a user level flow chart. So we can come in here, I'll go ahead and click on there it comes up with a flow chart that we can use. So this will navigate us through. So we come across and it's gonna be a series of yes and no questions. So in this case here, should the user be able to edit pages? We'll go ahead and say yes. Should they be able to create pages, sections, folders, and assets? They're gonna be helping us with creating new things, so I'll say yes. Modified page parameters. So these are gonna be parameters on the top of the page when it comes to your page heading. So different things like that. So we'll say yes, we do want them to be able to modify that. Do we want them to upload files? So maybe I'm gonna have them bringing in documents and bringing in pictures that we wanna go ahead and post. So I'm gonna say yes. Delete files. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with this person. So I am gonna say yes, they should be able to delete files. Manage information architecture and governance. No, that's kind of out of their way. We don't want them to go ahead and have that. Add to custom dictionary. Yes, I am gonna say that. Edit the page source. So this is actually going into the source code. They don't need to be able to do that. Import zip files. We don't see a reason that we'd be pulling zip files in for them. And overwriting files, not at this time. So this lets us know that we have a level per seven person with add to dictionary and allow delete. So this is something that when it comes to creating new users, it's an easy way to go in and find out how you want this user to be built by asking you a series of questions here. So when we're done, we can go ahead and close that window and we're done with our permissions chart here.
So we can see here that we do want this person set up as a level seven editor for us. We can come down here. We want to allow delete. And then we also want to allow them to add to the dictionary. So from here, we can go ahead and create our user. And now we have Steve set up here as our level seven user. I will also add um, with the flowchart that Paul just demonstrated, you'll notice that he was clicking on the links in each slide. Um, it's definitely very important that you do that instead of just scrolling through the flowchart because as the slides, because as you can imagine, it has a lot of options for a lot of different combinations. So if you just go through that PDF page by page, you're going to get very confused very quickly. So um, definitely click on the links in it and it will move you to where in the chart you need to be. Great, great addition, Erica, thank you. The next thing we wanna talk about is changing the title on a news page and changing the title on um, the news listing. So I'm in here as a level 10 user and I'm gonna come in here and my content and pages here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go into my pages here I'm going to go into doo -doo -doo, down here, go into news. And then what I'm going to use is us October 19 news here. So we can see that we have our title here of Training Tuesday. So maybe I realize that I want to change the title on this. So it's not part of the main content section. So I want to check it out here and go into properties and I'm in my parameters and we can see our page heading here is Training Tuesday. So before I do this, what I want to show you is I'm going to come back to my content and pages. I'm going to go to my index page and this will show up when the page is live. So depending on how your system is set up, how your um, configuration is, sometimes you won't see your listing page until you actually have it as a published version here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into my versions. I'm gonna come up to our page here and I'll go ahead and view it. And we can see here that we do have our title here with our picture of Training Tuesday. So I'm gonna come back in here now I'm gonna go back to my content pages. I'm gonna go back to that October 19th here, Training Tuesday, and I wanna change this title here. So I'm gonna go up to Properties. I have it checked out. So I'm gonna Training Tuesday, October 2019. So I'll go ahead and save this. It updates this for us. We can go ahead and publish this page out here. Go ahead and give myself a little note here. We'll publish that. And if I look at it on our page here, we can see that that updated for us. So now if I go back to my listing page and I refresh it, that did not change. That's actually being changed in a different location. So even though I did change it on the article, I still wanna change it on the news listing page. So where I would need to do that, I'm gonna come back to my article here. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna to go to my properties and I have my RSS here. So when I come into my RSS, we can see our title is still Training Tuesday. So I wanna come in and edit this. So we have our Training Tuesday. I'm gonna add my October 2019. So now we've updated this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And what I wanna do, I wanna rebuild the feed. So it's not just published, but I need to rebuild the feed here. So I'll go ahead and hit rebuild feed and then do a publish with it. It's gonna push it into production. So now it lets us know on the bottom here, all RSS feeds were successfully published. So now if I go back to my listing page and I refresh the page, it now updates it with the Training Tuesday, October 2019. So it's just something to keep in mind depending on how your news is set up that you may have that second step of going into the RSS feed and actually changing that 
and then going ahead and um, <coughs> rebuilding that feed there. The other thing I want to do here is talk about reusable content access settings. So if we come back into OU campus here, hold on one second. Let me grab a cough drop here. I'm right on the edge of getting a cold. So I'm sucking down cough drops as we're doing this. So in this case here, what I want to do, I want to go in and just take a brief look at where can you control access when it comes to our reusable content. So what I'm talking about there with reusable content are our assets, our components, and our snippets. So if I go into our snippets here, I can see that I do have a, list, a listing of different snippets here. They are grouped together. So I can come in here and go into a general group here, a generic group. And I do have maybe I want to say my address horizontal here. So I can come over here and open it up. And when I open that, I can see who it's available to. Now in this case here, it's available to administrators only. If I said, you know what, this is something that I do want to have available to other users, I could actually change it to everyone. Or if there's a specific group that I want to work with, that I want to be able to work with this. Maybe I only want the photo department to be able to use this. We could go ahead and change it just to the photo department and they'd be the only ones that would be able to access this. If I'm going to go ahead and change this to everyone, so everyone will see it, when it's under a different group, let's say I put it under photo department, and somebody who's not part of the photo department goes and looks at their snippets, they won't even see it as an option. So they won't even be aware that it's there. So it will only show up to anybody who has access to it. So in this case here, I'll go ahead and change this to everyone and go ahead and save it. So that's where you can go ahead and change that <clears throat> when it comes to <coughs> when it comes to snippets. When it comes to assets, you can also come in here and change your content. So we do have very similar here. I can go into my April form here. Oops. Hold on one second. I've got it checked out here. I can go into properties and on my properties here, I have access. So I'll go ahead and select asset access. <coughs> so we can go ahead and select the access group who has access to it. This is coming in to who can actually make changes to it. So at this point, we can say everyone has access to it where they can go ahead and make changes to it. Or again, we could lock it down to a group. So maybe we have our administration department. Um, campus administration is the only group that we want to have access to make changes to it. We could set that up. Um, and when it comes to available to, it's who can actually use it. So in this case here, it's available to everyone. But again, if you had a specific group that you wanted this to be part of, you could go ahead and select that group there. And then similarly, if we come into components here, we have, a, as an example, we have a student spotlight one. I've got it checked out here. And from here, we can come in and we go to properties. And again, we have an access level here. So if you do have the level here, who it's available to, you can again go ahead and select that. What department maybe it's workable for or if it's available to everyone or administrators only. So again, you do have that available on the reusable content for the snippets, assets, and components. And you can go ahead and set those up there when it comes to who has access to them. And again, if they have access to them, they'll see it in their list of options. If they don't have access to it, they won't even see that it's there. So it'll be completely hidden from them. While we're talking about reusable content, I want to come in here and I'm going to go to my content and pages here. I'm going to go back to my root directory and go into our training folder here. And I'm going to come in here, let's go ahead and go to page two here. One of the things I want to do is 
talk about how to use reusable content within reusable content. So if I come in here and I go into my main content here, I'm going to go ahead and let me move. Actually, I can go ahead and remove this component here. We can come in here and add um, a snippet. So let's say I come in here and I want to add an accordion snippet to the top here. So I'm going to come up, use my snippet tool, which is the little puzzle piece. I'm going to add an accordion here. I'll insert that. We can see where our content for our heading, content two, content three, and our three headings. So when I save and exit this, we can go ahead and see what we have here. But maybe there's different things that I want to put within this snippet here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back up here and go back to my main content. And what I can do is I can actually put another snippet within here. So if I come in here and say within my content here, I want to add a snippet, I can come in here and I go to my snippets. And one of the snippets that I have here is I've got a two column snippet. So maybe for that first section of our accordion, I actually want it as two columns. Well, in this case here, I'll go ahead and do that with two columns. I'll insert it here. If I grab some generic text here, let me go ahead and get some text here real quick. I only need just one paragraph of information here. Go ahead and copy this. Come back over here. Here's my column one. I'll go ahead and paste some information. Here's my column two. I'll go ahead and paste, oops. Go ahead and paste some stuff here. So now when I save and exit here, I can see I've got my heading here and then I have my two columns. So I can go ahead and put that snippet for two columns within my accordion snippet. When I go back and look at it, I can see here that the accordion is kind of a frame on the outside. And then I do have my two column one on the inside of it. Additionally, I can go ahead and place an asset in here if I wanted. So in this case here for my content too, maybe I want to put a form in here. So I'll come in here. I'll go ahead and do insert asset. I can take my April form here and insert it. So I can see that my asset is in here now. So when I save and exit and come in here, we can see our heading one. If I go to heading two, I have a form within here. So we can go ahead and put that form right within the snippet here. Additionally, if I wanted to go ahead and put a component in here, we can do that as well. So if I come down here to our third section here, we can go ahead and put a component in here. So my content three, I'm gonna go ahead and use our little component icon, the little atomic symbol here. I'm going to do a demo component and go ahead and insert that here. <clears throat> so here's a heading. We have an intro and we have our content. So we can go ahead and take that component, save it. It shows us that there is a component within that. And that way, when I save and exit, we can come up here. We can see that we've got our heading one with the two um, columns. And then if we go to our heading three, we can see that we actually have our component, our heading, our intro, and our content here. So we can go ahead and do that. You can also put an asset into a component. So if we come in here, and let me come back to my main content. I'll delete the accordion here. So I'll come in here, select an area within it, and delete table, and that goes ahead and removes it. So then if I come in here and I want to do an asset within a component, we can come in here and select an asset. So we've got one here. Um, where 
hold on one second here. Oh, I went to the wrong place. I actually want to go to my components here. We do have asset and a component, and we'll insert that. And here we can select the asset that we want. So I'll go ahead and click on that. If I come in here, maybe I want this gallery that I want to show. So we can select our gallery here. We'll insert it. And then we can put in a name. We can save that here. So we do have an asset within here. So when we save and exit here, we can see that we have this where we can go ahead. We have our component right here with the asset within it. So we can see what we have here. The next thing I want to transition to is putting instructions into a template. So let me come back up here to content and I'll go into our pages. We're currently in our training section. And if I come up here to new and I do a new one column page, we'll go ahead, put page title for this is going to be training Tuesday. And we create it. This comes up and it gives us blank information here. There's nothing within my main content. But maybe I say that I do want to go ahead and have some information here. So when my editors come in, they can go ahead and see here's some information that just as a reminder, maybe things that you need to fill out. Maybe there's a message there that you want to make sure that they see. So what we can do is I can come back up here, go back to my content and I'll go to pages. I'm gonna to go to my root folder here. I'm gonna go into resources and I have my templates in my OU folder under templates here. So I'm gonna come in here. I wanna do that interior page. So we have our interior template here and I'm gonna use the interior template. So I'm gonna use interior.tmpl. I'm gonna open that up. Let me go ahead and change the color here. And if I open this up and come down, I can see here that I do have my editable region. So this is my main content here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and change this main content section. So right now we can see that there's nothing in here. Um, I do have it checked out. So I'm gonna put in just some quick text here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a P tag. I'm gonna say, have a great Halloween. And we've got our closing P tag already there. So now that I have this in here, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'll publish this. We added our Halloween message, message. We'll go ahead and save that there. <clears throat> so now if I go back to my content and my root directory, go back into training here, and I create another new page. This is gonna be our one column page. This is gonna be a new, new page. And for file name, we're just going to call it Training Tuesday 2. And we'll go ahead and create it. When we come in here now, we do have some default text. So maybe this is just a reminder that they need to publish something out. Make sure you publish it or make sure this page gets reviewed before publishing anything like that, you can go ahead and add to that template there. So it gives you that ability to mark that page. As we come in here, the next thing I want to do is maybe you have a page that you want to keep with the same URL over and over again. So, but you want different information on it. So in this case here, 
what we could do, we can go in here and I'm going to come back to my content pages here. And maybe it's a lunch menu or a food menu for your cafeteria and you want to leave it at the same URL over and over again, but you want to replace the document. So what I can do, I can come in here, I can come into my training folder and I'll go into my documents folder here. We can see that we have a sample document and when I open that up, it's our beautiful sample PDF that we have. Now maybe I want to replace this with a new document. So currently, if I check this out and go to versions, I can see that I do have several versions that are out here. So we knew that I want to keep the version history as well so I can always go back to a prior version. So in this case here, I'm going to come back to my content and pages and I'm going to upload that new version that I want. So in this case here, I'm going to do upload. I'm going to add a file and I can see here that I have a Halloween sample PDF. I'll open that. So what I want to do, I want this to replace the original file that we have here of sample hyphen document. So I want to overwrite that and then I'll rename this with the same information. So we can come here. Sample hyphen document. We've said that we do want to overwrite the existing one. We'll go ahead and start upload. So now if I come in, I look at the sample document. It gives us our new document. The URL is exactly the same. And then we also have the versions out here. So now that I've, uh, I've uploaded that image, I want to go ahead and publish this out. We'll call it the new Halloween version. Oops. And publish that. So now when we go in and view this, we actually have our newest one. And when we look at our URL here, if we come in here, we can see that the URL is still sampledocument.pdf. Um, question from Steve, aren't you concerned about caching by using the same URL? Not that I've seen because when we go in and refresh it, it's actually been clearing it out. I haven't seen where that's a problem. Um, that would be something to keep in mind though and keep an eye on, but so far I haven't seen that that's been an issue there. Hmm, okay. So Michelle, you say you have had issues with that. Not quite sure um, how we could resolve that right now. I think some of it depends on use case and it is kind of a balance between what do you gain by keeping the same URL versus, you know, do you want to switch it up? Um, and caching can happen intermittently for different people anyway. If someone accesses the same file every day as opposed to if they only access it every week. Um, so that's really, you know, yeah, you can run into caching with this, but it's also, it's a question of sort of balancing out what are your different needs and different scenarios where you would be doing this. So it does depend on your situation, whether okay. you want to use this or not. Great, thank you. And then the other thing I want to talk about here is if we have something where we need to get a URL set up, let's say we want to link to something and we may not have access to it. So I'm gonna come in here. If I go to my setup and my groups, I can see that for our photo department here, we could go ahead and look at the group that we have here. So we've got Brenda, Mike, myself, and our level six user. Our level eight person is not part of the photography group, so they don't have access to that folder. They'll be able to see it, but they don't have access to it. But maybe they've been asked, if I cancel here and go back to my content pages, in training, under our photography department, we have a link for a photo expo that's coming up.
And our level eight person has been given the task to go ahead and create on their page a link to this page. So they want to link to it, but they don't actually have access to it. How can you do that? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to log out as my level 10 user and log in as my level eight. And we'll go ahead and log in here. So if I come back to my content, my pages, we can see here, if I go into training, we have the photography department, but it is locked out. So I can see that it's there, but I don't have access to it. But if we come in here and I go to our page one here, I've been given a note here to go ahead and create a photo link, a, a link to the photo expo here. What I can do is I'll go ahead and come into our main content here. I'll go ahead and select where I want this link. I can either do insert edit link from the top or I can do a right click on it and insert edit link. But when I come to my URL here, immediately I know I don't have access to that photography section, but I'm currently looking at the staging folders. If I change this over to the production site, when it's in production, I still do have access to that. So I can see that photography department folder there. So from here, I can go into that folder. I can go ahead and link to that photo expo here and we can insert it. So photo expo. And we'll give it another title. And then we'll click on OK. And then we can go ahead and publish this page out when we go ahead and save and exit. We can see that we have our link here. So now when I publish this out, we'll publish this. We look at our new window here, click on Photo Expo, and we'll go ahead and lead me to that page. So we do have that ability, even though they may not have access to that page, if they go and look at the production site, they can still go ahead and link to that page. With that, that's what we've got to, oh, I'm sorry. Um, can the user be locked out of production as well? Not that I'm aware of. Um, Erica, are you familiar with that? Um, you can restrict, so it depends what you're talking about, um, within the OU campus interface. Um, from what I remember, and I'll follow up with you and get you more on this, but you can lock out users from accessing the production server. Um, which will affect them from looking into it, from looking at files. The prop, you only want to do that though if you don't want that user to publish because publish actions affect the production server. So if you lock a user from the production server, you remove their ability to publish pages and you may want that. Um, but I, I know there is an overall access setting and I believe it's your site settings where you can restrict access to the production server to, you know, to the same list of groups that you would for anything else. But again, if you, if you say you lock down your production server to admins only, you then restrict the use, you then restrict the ability to publish as well to only admins. So, okay. yeah. and so, you know, if your users aren't allowed to publish in the first place, uh, like you mentioned, Steve, then it's not a problem. Um, but you want to keep that in mind that restricting access to the production server restricts access to publishing as well. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Erica, for that clarification. With that, that's all I've got today. Um, hopefully this gave you some ideas of different things that you can go in and um, work with um, looking at different settings within here when it comes to your users, setting up your users, giving them access to certain things, um, and problem solving within OU Campus. So let me change over here. Verica, do you want to share back the PowerPoint or would you like me to? So our next um, Training Tuesday will be December 3rd.
and we'll be covering um, creative components. Um, hopefully everybody is seeing this slide. Um, be sure to visit the OCN and the support site for further details. Those will be posted for you. Um, any last minute questions that we can go ahead and answer for you? Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and close this session. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Sorry, hold on. I was not muted. <laughs> oh, I, no. I muted <laughs> yeah, it's been a day. Um, I, so I do want to say, so because the last week of November is Thanksgiving, um, and because obviously the last week of December, it's Christmas time, we're not really going to do a training Tuesday for either of those days. So what we'd like to do instead is have our training Tuesday for the next um sort of our next training Tuesday, have that be the first week of December. So that will be December 3rd, not our usual last Tuesday of the month, but again, you know, making room for the holidays. Um, let me just really quick show the slide with the information. Um, sorry, and also I want to thank everybody for sticking with us through the technical difficulties. We know they're, they've been a bit, um, you know, there's been some of them, but um, I appreciate everybody's patience for dealing with it. All right, here we go. Okay. So let me... Okay. Oop. Sorry, behind the scenes, curtain behind the feet. Okay, there we go. So, like I said, December 3rd, a little different from our normal schedule, but we do want to give you guys time for the holidays. Um, and we're going to cover creative components, so different uses for components, things a little out of the box that you might be doing with them. So that should be fun. And as always, registration links will be posted on the support site on the OCN. And you can find all, and you can find the recorded version of this as well on our support site. It'll be up later today, most likely. And one more thing, as you're going, you're gonna see a feedback form. I really encourage every, everybody to fill out that survey. It's only a few questions, but it's really important. It lets us know how we're doing. It lets us know what you guys wanna hear from us next. And it helps us tailor this content to what you guys wanna see, which is the most important thing. So with that, everybody have a great rest of your day. Have a happy Halloween, and I will see you all in December.